All right, I'm going to go over the uh, product <coughs> shot assignment so that as your um, text pieces are rendering out, um, you can start working on this. <coughs> uh, I'm going to go over the submission form first. Remember, they'll be up here in the purple binder, so you don't need to worry about copying it as we go. Uh, so this project will be due November 7th. Uh, if we look at when that is, we'll basically have just a few weeks on this one. It should be a relatively short-ish assignment, so it's not going to take you like you know, a whole month to do. Uh, the purpose of this one is that we'll be modeling a realistic product for using it in an ad. So if you've ever looked at uh, product ads, you'll see uh, a lot of these types of things are, um, this is like a CG or hand-drawn uh, one, same thing there, same thing there. These are all like CG created ones, okay? Uh, we want to keep it relatively simple, so we won't be modeling a car or race or something crazy. Uh, we will be modeling three items. So you want those three items to be n unified. So I wouldn't model like a gun and crayons. Those are two opposite things, I would think. Uh, things that would go together. Uh, we'll use Photoshop, uh, InDesign, or Illustrator uh, to create textures for the labels. So if you look at this one here, you'll see that this is like a uh, uh, aromatherapy, essential oil type thing. So all these labels were created inside of Photoshop or Illustrator. I forget which, where I created them, but either one. Uh, same thing back here. You'll see that there are some textures on this that were also created in Photoshop and or Illustrator. And I think this one doesn't have any of that one there. Okay. So uh, at least one of your items has to have that Photoshop texture label. Um, you may have more. Create appropriate lighting setup, animate a camera sweep, and create a still image. So we'll be doing a couple different uh, moves with this one. So one of them will be a still cam, which is just a head-on shot with our camera. And then we'll also be doing a animated camera. Okay, so we'll basically be rotating from one side to the other. Uh, there'll be a different resolutions and obviously for different purposes. If this is something for a commercial, we wouldn't render it out at 3,000 pixels. We'd render it out at something appropriate for commercial. But if it's going in a newspaper or a magazine or something, we need to make sure we render it out at a big enough size that it could be used for that kind of thing, okay? Uh, you'll be turning in your label designs and product sketches. So all of your sketches that you're doing now should be different layouts for what you want the labels to look like or the products to look like, um, uh, those kinds of things. That's what should be in your sketchbook. And then your turn in will be the scenes, the textures, and your final movie, um, as well as your artwork that will be turned in also. And then your movie will have a camera sweep across the items. The still will be a magazine-like ad for our product. So we should end up with something could be like this, could be like that, could be like that, okay? Just something that's more designed than just a render. It'll have text on it, uh, it'll look fancy. Um, you'll see the resolution sizes are obviously different. So for the animation, we'll be doing 960 at 540. For the still, we'll be doing 2400 by 3000, okay, which is um, basically an 8 by 10 at 300 dots per inch. Those up there are all 8 by 10, okay? So if we wanted something, if we were to take this 960 by 540 and blow it up to that size, it would be very grainy. We don't want that to be grainy. We want it to be nice and clear. And then uh, 14 points possible for this one. Cool. Questions on the submission form? Pretty straightforward. All right, close that, save it, go back. All right, so this is the one I did last semester. Um, I'm going to keep the videos up on Canvas just so you can see what those other ones are. Um, this semester, I'm going to start with uh, these ones, which is going to be more of like a Burger King <coughs> packaging thing. Um, I would avoid trying to create food products, like actual food. Um, I'll probably create the fries for this, but I wouldn't want to do like the hamburger uh, because it gets into a lot of different things, like getting the lettuce to look exactly right and the tomatoes and the pickles and all that. Um, not that you couldn't do it, it's just a lot more work. And at this level, and the amount of time we have, we don't have that much time to spend on each one of those. Um, so I'm gonna focus on being able to just do this kind of thing. So I'll probably find like a, a package or a picture of a, of a Whopper that I could use for the packaging. Um, everything else, I'm going to create by hand, OK? Um, 
So I may use, I will use these as reference for like what colors Burger King uses. Um, I will use the fonts as what they use, but all of the labeling I do for the items, for the bag, for the cup, for the fries, for this, I'm all gonna create all of those from scratch, okay? <clears throat> all right, so uh, to get started on this, we start off the same way that we did our other stuff, which is going to our P drive, 2510, copying the template folder, renaming it product folder, and then any references that we get, throw them in the reference, fo in the reference folder, okay? Here I have a Pepsi cup that I found online. I'm gonna use this as a reference for what I use to draw my stuff with. Um, anything else you could drop in there. Typically, the more comfortable you get with modeling things, the less uh, references you need to actually import, a lot of it you can use as just eyeballing what, it's gonna, what it should look like. So let's say I'm gonna model a cup here. Um, I'm always using this ground plane as my actual ground. So as I build the cup, I'm gonna use the ground as like where the bottom of the cup should be. Um, I'm gonna first go to edit preferences. I'm gonna go to my files and make sure that I've linked that product folder to one of my files. That way any images I bring in will automatically connect to that same folder. That way if I switch computers, um, I don't have to worry about relinking every file. I can just change the preferences to where my product folder is and it'll automatically find all of those, okay? If you've worked at home, you probably noticed that it doesn't uh, take the files with you. All right, so I'm gonna go to my front view here and I'm just middle clicking to get out and in the views, remember? I'm gonna hit Control D and that will bring up, not Control D, I'm gonna go to Options, there it is, and Configure, not Control D. And this allows me to bring in an image. So I'm gonna go to my back plate. I'm gonna hit the dots here and then I'm gonna bring in that picture of a Pepsi cup. Now as I model stuff, typically I don't bring in images because if I model it and it doesn't look right, I'm comfortable enough with the software that I can tweak it to get it to look right. Um, at this stage, because you're new to modeling, it helps to have that background image so you can have something to line it up with. So I'm gonna bring in a Pepsi cup, and now I have an image to go off of to start modeling this cup. Um, if I need to change where its position is, I can use this offset Y. And like I said, I'm gonna keep the bottom of the cup lined up perfectly with that ground plane. And I'm also gonna try to line up the center of the cup with that green line. If you're ever uh, don't have an image. Like let's say that I want to model a Pepsi cup and I don't have a picture of that, but I do have one at home. Take a picture of it. It takes two seconds versus spending a half hour trying to dig one up. Um, you want to get it as flat as possible. You will notice that there is some perspective here. So the bottom of the cup isn't perfectly flat with this bottom line. Same thing with the top. There is some perspective and some angling that's happening. Um, in an ideal world, we would be as far away from that Pepsi cup as we could we would zoom in as close as we can get to it to fill our frame, and then we would take the picture. And what that would do is it would flatten it out as much as possible, okay? Uh, but we can work with this, that's fine. So we can model this a couple different ways. I'll show you a couple different ways to model it. So I'm gonna use my Create Spline and use the Pen tool. And I'm going to click here. I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to click and drag. Now this is the wrong way I'm doing it first. Okay, there we go. And then I'm just going to hit the space bar and then realize I moved that one way too far over. That should have been like way over here. There we go. All right, so now uh, one of the things that I did wrong with how I modeled this or how I built that curve is I'm drawing it to the shape of the cup that I'm currently seeing on the screen. I can't do that because the shape of the cup on the screen has the perspective to it. It has that lip up here and it has this angling down here. If this is a 3D cup that I've built and I'm looking at it dead on in the side view, I should see that bottom being perfectly flat and I should see the top of this being perfectly flat, okay? So when you start to draw this stuff, don't follow the contours of the shape. Follow the shape, understand where you should go and cut it over, but don't follow it exactly. It's there for reference, not for like exactness. So with this, I'm gonna start here at the center. I'm gonna ignore the fact that this goes up and I'm just gonna come right over here. 
And then I'm just going to click and drag, and then oops, move it a little bit closer. Click and drag, there we go. And then I'm going to go up to the top. And then I'm going to click and drag here, click and drag there. And I'm estimating how thick I believe that is. And then I'm just going to go right to the center. And I can tap the space bar. So you can see here where my curve is based off of this, where it should be, not where the actual image is. Okay? So now I can hide that. So I'm going to go to Options and Configure. And I will say Show Picture, Go Away. Now you'll notice I built the top of the cup. I did not build the inside of it. I will get to building the inside of it later. Uh, for now, I'm just going to build it like this. Um, I could have followed this down and brought this all the way inside there, um, but it's sometimes difficult to get this to be perfectly lined up. Not that it even matters, because in this case, I'm not even going to see it, but I'm fine doing it just like that. Um, next step, I'm going to make sure that these curves are exactly lined up. So I'm going to grab this one. You'll see this one is a bit uh, lower. This one is a bit lower than that. So I just need to adjust these. So I'm going to grab all of these points. I'm going to go to my scale tool and just scale it down flat. And if I hold shift, it'll snap. There we go. And I'll do the same thing on the top. <clears throat> Make sure that all of these top ones are perfectly flat. And then I'll grab this one and this one. Make sure these are perfectly flat this way. And then I'm going to make sure that they're perfectly lined up with that center line. If they're off, the bottom of my cup will have a hole in it. I don't want that. So I can move this over like that. Um, I could also turn on my snapping. So I say work plane snap, oops, grid point snap, and grid line snap. And now as I drag this, you'll see that it snaps right to that center line. All right, cool. So now I'm going to take this shape. And I'm going to go to my uh, lathe here and just drop this into the lathe. So now that created that cup shape. Now, at any point, I could take that and adjust it still. So if I don't like uh, maybe where one of those lines were, how um, maybe how thick that top curly part is, I can jump back to the spline. Let me turn off the lathe. Jump back to the spline, grab one of the points, and tweak it, or grab this point and tweak it. Let me turn my snap off. Okay, maybe that's coming in too much. Let me just grab the handlebar and just squeeze that in. Let's just pull this up some. There we go. Okay. So now that adjust that, and there we go. Okay. So that's one way I can use a curve to start off with my base shape. So that's that's one way I could create this cup. Let me just slide that over. Uh, this is typically how I like to model stuff, and again, this is you can you can play with this as you're new to 3D. You don't have a set in stone way that you're doing stuff. You just have kind of like whatever you see. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a cylinder. I'm going to let me jump to here so you can see it. I'm going to take my divisions down to about eight. Uh, take the caps off of it. And then I'm going to go into my side view here and just adjust the positioning of it. So I'm going to scale it up. Let me switch this back to this mode. I'm going to hit C. I'm going to grab all the points on the top. And I'm going to scale that up. Move this to the bottom so I maybe use snap. Maybe I have to zoom in some and then you snap. There we go. Uh, I will scale this out. As I'm scaling, um, I'm making sure that I scale it in all directions. If I were to scale it in just this one direction, it would flatten out the cup like that and that wouldn't look right. So I have to make sure I scale it in all three directions so that it matches the perspective and the, sh the sizing. You'll notice that I'm not perfectly centered on the cup. The left side of the cup lines up perfectly along that edge, but the right side doesn't. It doesn't matter. It just has to be close enough. Okay, so now that I have the overall shape of the cup, now I'm going to go into my edge tool. 
and then I'm going to start um, shaping it out. So I'm going to grab the edge. I'm going to go to fill hole or close hole. There it is. I'll do the same thing on the bottom. Close that. And then I'm going to start grabbing these pieces and tweaking what they look like. So at either point, I could start doing this kind of stuff to this one or that one or however I do it. So in this case, let's say that I needed to bring this in. So I'm going to extrude this inner. There we go. I'll extrude this inner. Oops, wrong one. Still selected on the top. I'm going to extrude it upper. So just regular extrude and push it up. I'm going to insert an edge loop here. I'm going to grab the faces that go around. So I need to go to edge loop and then extrude this out. And I'll grab this, extrude it down some. And this can actually go pretty far all the way down. So I'm just going to extrude it once and then just use my regular move tools and scale tools. There we go. OK. Now, this is why I like to use this method, because this is pretty loose. Uh, this has a lot of divisions. I can still go to the lathe, and I can still take these down. So now it basically has the same amount of divisions. Uh, but look how many divisions are going around this edge here. It's a lot of divisions. I could then go to the spline and then go to my natural and then lower the amount of divisions. Let me turn my wireframe on so you can see it. Okay, and that's definitely a doable option. Um, I just typically prefer to work like this. I feel like I, I have complete control over every single edge and vertex and, and face that I create for this one. Now, eventually, this will need to be smoothed out. So I would hold Alt, click on that subdivision surface. Let me turn my wireframe off. And then I would get that cup shape. Okay, again, it's up to you of how you want to tackle this. If you start doing this kind of stuff, you may like it and that may work for you. You may want to go with this method and just start with a cylinder or a shape and build it from there. <clears throat> Now, once I hit this point where I have these divisions, uh, at some point I need to start adding some bevels. So I'm going to first go here and here. Actually, let me delete this one. I don't like that one there. Dissolve. There we go. I'm going to go to this one and that one. I'm going to add a bevel. That's way too big. Way too big of a bevel. Come on. I don't know why it's like jumping to 1,000. Like, uh, let me turn my snap off. Maybe that's why. Yep, that was it. Okay, so now I have this nice rounding here with this bevel. Now I'm going to add a um, tighter bevel in areas where a tighter bevel is required. So anywhere there's a sharp corner, I'm going to add a tight bevel there. <clears throat> and that will make sure that when I smooth it out, that I don't get too, many, um, too much softness. Uh, I may need to play with the divisions, so that I've added one division there. Whoops. It's a little softer. Yes, yes. And now when I hold Alt and click on this, it'll hold the shape of that cup a lot more. Okay, Before, it was a little bit softer, and so it was like smoothing this out. And so instead of a crisp edge on the bottom, it was basically just like a U or something. Um, I still need, turn that off, I still need to bevel this inside edge here. So let's go to Edges, click on Cylinder. This one I can't double click because it doesn't have an actual uh, edge in the middle. So I have to manually click each one of these. Oops. And then the same thing on the inside of my cup. I have to manually click each one of those. Now, if you model the cup and then you're like, I don't like the way this is turning out, delete it and remake it. It'll take you less time the second time or the third time or the fourth time, and it'll look a lot better. So now we'll turn that subdivision back on. We'll click off of it. And now we have a nice, crisp looking cup. Cool. And then again, this is why I like to keep it nice and light because this has very few divisions. If I'm going to be working with the texturing of this, uh, it's very easy to do because I have very few faces compared to this one that has a bit more, or I have to tweak it to get there. To create the lid, I could do the same thing I did uh, with the other one. I could go in this, this view and draw out what the lid looks like. 
for every item you model, you want to look up a reference for it. So um, fountain, drink. Some of these parts we will actually um, we will model. Some of the parts will texture. So I'm not seeing right away like a side view of a lid, which is fine. I don't actually need a side view of a lid. Um, but maybe I just want to grab something that looks like a lid, and I can kind of use it as my basis. So this is typically like the one that you would get at Burger King. <clears throat> so um, actually. And if you ever used, I don't, this is all of me. I've never heard of all of me, but if you ever use Pinterest, Pinterest is very much like this. So looking at that image there, I can see what the lid looks like. Um, these little ribs that are on the side, those would be textured later on. These uh, bumps here would be textured later on. I want to get the major gist of what this cup is doing. So this flare, this goes in, this comes down, and then it comes in like that. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So if I'm going to draw this in my side view, I'm going to use my pen tool, and I would just draw this. Do, do, and then this would come across, and then it goes down, and it comes up, and then it goes across. And then I would do the same thing I did before, kind of line things up. That's good. I would then do a lathe on this, and that would create the lid. Okay, and then just like I said before, I would always take this and knock my subdivisions down. Uh, typically, if I used eight on this one, I'm going to use eight on the top one. That way, they have the same amount of smoothness to them. And then if I needed to adjust anything, I could adjust anything I need to. Turn that lathe off. I drew this in the other view. Let's turn that lathe back on again. So this needs to come down further so it's actually in the cup. So like that. And this needs to be scooted down a hair. Maybe this could be scooted a little closer. If I need an extra point here, um, pen tool, add point. There we go. And I just right click so I could add a point right there. And then I can turn that lathe back on, and then we have our lid. Now here, I may want to take this and actually open it up so that I would have an opening for that uh, container. <coughs> I think I'll do that like this. I hope that works. Now eventually, this lathe will be smoothed along with this one, so you'll see how they line up together. Okay, now this is what it looks like without any bevels, so it's just really smooth and really soft. So I'm going to go to the lathe. I have to hit C on the lathe so I can lock it in. And now I can grab the edges and just start throwing in some bevels to hold the shapes there. So anywhere that I see um, a hard edge, that's where I want to put a bevel. And then here, this is where the straw would come in. So I'm going to grab this, 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 this. Let's just see if this works. I'm going to dissolve it. Yep, that worked. Did I get rid of all of it? No, just there. Okay. And then I'm going to extrude. There we go. And I'm going to say um, preserve groups. So what that does is it separates each one of those pieces so that they're not all on top of each other, or so they're not all connected. Uh, and then I can take each one of these pieces and scale them in. And then move it up. And it doesn't have to match perfectly, but you know what the straw would look like. Maybe you know, these are down then. I think that would make more sense. Down. 
little bevel there. Now I need to connect this. Uh, if we look at this face right here, when I dissolve that edge, this face now became a non four sided face. Uh, it actually has one, two, three, four, and five edges. It should have four. That makes the world a happier place. So I'm going to use my knife and then I'm going to use the line cut. So I'm going to hit KK, click a point here, and then click a point in the center ish of this. Then tap the spacebar, tap the spacebar again to get back in it. Okay, click there, click about here, tap the spacebar to get out, tap the spacebar to get back in. Tap spacebar to get out, tap spacebar to get back in. So it might take some practicing just to figure out like where divisions should be, uh, but after you kind of play with it a bit, you'll get it. So now let's see what that looks like. Uh, trim off this. Cool. That looks much better. You can see how these edges are nice and crisp here, uh, where before it was nice. It was like soft. It was like too soft going around. Okay, now let's say I'm going to make a um, straw. I could start off with a cylinder, but in this case, I'm going to start off with a cube. So I'm bring it up. I'm going to scale it. I have the hole there of how big it's going to be, so I'm just going to scale the hole down. Stretch this up. Uh, nicely, Burger King straws are straight, so we don't have to add a bend or anything to it, which is um, good for us in this instance. I'm going to hit C on it so I can delete the top face and the bottom face. And then now if I were just to add a subdivision, it turns around. And then I can add a little bit of rotation to it so it looks a little bit nicer, right? There you go. Cool. All right, so there's my cup. <clears throat> so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add materials for the cup. As I create things, I'm not concerned about getting it finalized yet. I just want to start separating them and giving them distinct similar colors. So this will be the cup material. And I'm just going to color it in a similar color of this. So it's white is the main color or like a somewhat off white. So maybe like that. Drop this on the actual cup. Uh, let's go to the reflectance and this should be Say Beckman or Ward is sufficient for this. This should be pretty rough, like that. Okay, and I'm not finalized with this. It's just a starting point. So I'm going to copy that material a couple times, and I'll have one for the straw, and I'll have one for the lid. I'll drop the one in the straw. I'll drop the one in the lid. <clears throat> the lid's one is going to be um, a little bit transparent, not fully, just a little bit. So I'm going to pull the value down. And then the one on the straw would be maybe um, not as rough. I don't think the lid would be as rough either. Okay, it's a little bit too transparent on that uh, lid. Let's go there to transparency. And blurriness, I'm going to pull that up. a bit better. Here it was before. You could see it looked totally transparent. There it's a bit fuzzier, so it's still transparent, uh, but we're not seeing everything there. Now let's say that I wanted to add, let's say my camera angle is going to be something like this. So I may have coke in it uh, with ice or whatever. Um, that's my original cylinder. I'm just going to duplicate this whole group. I'm going to go to my lathe. <clears throat> and hit C on it. Yeah, lathe isn't doing anything at this point. Drop this there. Get rid of the lathe. There it is. Uh, I'm going to go to my edges or faces. And I'm going to select everything on the outside here. So like this, come on, that. And then I'm going to double click the outside and delete that. 
So basically what I have there is just the inside of the cup. Then I'm going to switch to my knife tool. Then I'm going to switch to my face tool again. Grab that loop selection and delete. And then I'm going to go to edges and I'm just going to close off the top of this. Oops, turn off that subdivision. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to add a sub or a bevel on this. And the bottom already has a bevel. So now I have, I guess I have an extra edge or face right there. Let's grab it. Select loop. Maybe I'll just use this. There we go. I don't know what that was. All right, so now I can take this and drop it back inside here. Uh, turn the subdivision back on, then drop it back inside here. And maybe scale it down just a touch. So now I'm going to give this a material, and this will be, let's just say, Coke. Again, just kind of placeholder material. It's not final material, just something so I can see what it's going to look like. Uh, a bit transparent, uh, a bit of refraction on this. A bit of blurriness, maybe like five or ten. I think ten looks good. Uh, a bit of reflection. Oops, roughness is down, reflection is up. Maybe the color for this is also kind of like a coke, orangey, browny color. Let's take the actual color and take the brightness down some. Maybe you on reflectance, transparency. There's on transparency, you also want that same color, that same orangey brown. Too much, too much. There we go. Good enough for our placeholder. All right. So now, if we were to render this, we see nothing. Where did my Coke go? There you are. I think the top lid just might be a little bit too uh, blurry. So let's take the blurriness down of transparency to 10% blurry and more transparent. All right, now we're getting something else there. Not perfect, but again, it's just a placeholder uh, as we're working. Okay, so now that I have the cup done, uh, what I would do is just go through and label all my stuff. Coke, straw, lid, cup. This is my old one. I can just delete that. And then I'm going to take all these layers, group them together, and say cup or drink. That's better. And then I'll go to my layers, make a new layer called drink. Assign all of these to it. Make sure that it hides it. Yes, it does. Good. And then I would start on my second piece. Now, as I went through and started modeling um, all of these, you'll see it's very similar to that. Here is my cup pieces, straw, lid, and cup. <clears throat> my angle for this is going to be kind of down, so I don't need the Coke in there. Um, when I modeled the fry box, I looked at the essence of what the shape is. So I looked at, uh, of course I can't find that same image, but this works. Um, I looked at how it's kind of like rounded right there. And so I started off with a cube <clears throat> and then I just deleted points and added enough divisions. If you look at what it looks like without the division there, that's how simple that shape was. And then I added 
some bevels on here just and uh, extruded it to give it some thickness. And then I have that. Same thing for this whopper box. If I turn off the subdivision here, you can see how light the geometry is. And then once I added the bevels and the subdivisions, then it added that. Here's the bag. And again, this is what it looks like without any subdivisions. In order to create the crease in there, I looked at what a real bag has on it, and I created the divisions in here so that it would have that kind of thing. In this one, each one of these things is a separate model. So the cap is one model. The little tab here is another model. The glass bottle is another model, and the label is another model. So each one of these pieces is kind of built off of the other one. <coughs> I did not build in this one any um, spirals, something that would actually allow you to screw it on. It wasn't necessary because you don't see it. Um, it does have thickness to it, so you can see that. Because everyone is going to have different items, uh, what I recommend you doing is trying to find a reference video for what other ones are there are, are out there. So if you look at Cinema 4D modeling, um, uh, let's say a bottle, how to model a beer bottle in cinema, how to model a beer bottle in cinema, how to model a glass bottle in cinema. So even though it's a glass bottle, beer bottle, whatever, if you have something like that, very easily you can convert it. Here's how to model an organic shape in cinema. Here's how to model a whiskey scene. Okay, here's how to model a cap. Here's how to model the bottom of a 20 ounce. Find out where your um, skill level is. Something like this is much more complicated than the stuff that I showed. The reason I chose these shapes is because they're pretty simple. A lot of the detail is going to come from the rendering and the texture. It's not a matter of, you know, spending 12 hours trying to model the perfect bottle and get everything to flow from one piece to the next to the next. Uh, it's about doing that kind of thing. Even these little things here, oops, these little things here, those are pretty easy to do. Um, these things here, another easy one to do, okay? So use YouTube as a good reference for where you can find more stuff. Campbell Soup model uh, can. Um, you could also look up, if, if you don't find anything specific, uh, model, I'm just gonna put dragon. It's not what we're modeling, but just dragon uh, wireframe. <coughs> and whatever I model, if it's something brand new, I'll typically jump to um, Google and type in whatever it is I'm trying to model and then wireframe. And this will give me a good idea for how the wireframe is moving throughout that um, specific thing. Uh, hamburger. It's like x-ray, it's not wireframe, there we go. So here's a wireframe of a hamburger. Photorealistic 3D hamburger, hamburger 3D model, hamburger 3D model. Yeah, not a whole lot on the hamburger wireframe area, but there's some stuff there. There we go. Here are some bottles. So again, you can kind of see what the wireframe would look like. And that kind of helps you understand where divisions should be and what they should look like as you're building them. Like something like this, you can see exactly where the wireframes are for these kinds of things. Like all these are separate pieces where it's really thick. Same thing here, you can kind of see how the lines are flowing and it gives you a, an indicator as to where that's at. Okay. If you start modeling something and it looks not realistic, delete it, start it again, okay? Or try tweaking it. Uh, each one of your models, if you figure how long we have on this, uh, till the seventh, which is right there. If you started working on this, let's say next class, and you spent one class modeling an object here, one modeling here, one modeling there, that gives you a good amount of time to get your stuff going. If you see you're spending two classes on a model, well, there's one class, two classes, three classes, and then you don't have time to do the other stuff, okay? So make sure, I would say, one day per item 
or one and a half days per item is a good amount of time. Um, especially as simple as the items could be or should be if you're not comfortable with modeling anything outside the box. These things, even though they're simple models, once I put some nice textures on them, it'll look 10 times better, okay? Uh, versus me trying to create a really complex model and, and then falling apart. Uh, all right. I want model. So let's say, for instance, this thing. So let's say I tried to model this and I do a half-assed job of, of doing that, um, it's gonna look terrible no matter how good the labels look on this. Versus something like that, which is a very simple model, but the labeling, the layout, and the color is what makes it pop. Same thing here, same thing there. It also helps if you find something, whatever it is you're, you're choosing, um, that you could duplicate. So let's say I do this one. I can model one of these and duplicate it and have several of those items it only counts as one item, but then I can add other stuff into the scene, and it just makes it a bit more impactful than trying to do something like this and spending three weeks on it, and it turns out horrible. Okay. Um, same thing here, right? I could spend three weeks modeling this, but if it doesn't turn out anywhere near what it should turn out, then what's the point, right? You're better off working with where your skill level is. I will make you aware of this kind of stuff where you see the transparency, you see the beads of water coming down it, that's more difficult to do. That's why I chose these ones because these are really simple. It's just cardboard and paper. This, I have glass, I have ice, I have uh, Sprite in there, uh, which is funny because a Sprite bottle looks full, but that's already full. So I don't know how they did that. Uh, another bottle of Sprite maybe. Also we have some caustics here. We have reflections. It's a lot of stuff going on in this specific scene. Okay, this one looks really nice too. Really simple model. Um, and then the background, it looks like they just have another couple versions of that same bottle. And then some other items in the scene that just help kind of bring everything together. I wouldn't try modeling all that stuff. 